Hello and welcome. We will start by seeing what is MediaType Formatters. After that we will see the available MediaType Formatters that we can use. And finally we will create our custom MediaType Formatter. First we need to understand what is MediaType Formatters. As we saw in the previous videos, Web API can handle different formats like JSON, XML and BSON and more. It uses MediaType Formatters to do that. And these classes serialize the request and the response data. So Web API can understand the request format and also produce a response in a format that the client understands. What happens is something like this. We have this request where we say that content type is XML, so we send XML and also we accept JSON, so we receive JSON. Let's see this in another way. We have a client app where we have a content type of XML, it accepts JSON. Of course, we have a client with OCD and we have a web API. The web API have a collection of media type formatters, JSON, XML, BSON, MyJSON and more. This MyJSON is a custom media type formatter, okay? We send our request in XML. Then web API have to convert XML into CLR object. So it will take the XML media type formatter. Then it has to give the response in JSON because the client accepts JSON. So it will take the first one and this is important is the first one is not the other one. The my JSON is the first one that appears in the list. It will take this media type formatter and converts the CLR objects into JSON. Then it will send the response where we have in the body JSON. To see the available media type formatters that we have in our web API, we can do something like this. We can call configuration dot formatters and this will give us a collection of available media type formatters. So if we call this saying that we want JSON, we accept JSON, we will receive a JSON list with JSON media type formatter, XML media type formatter, form URL encoded media type formatter, jQuery MVC form URL encoded formatter and finally BSON media type formatter. Also, if we send the accept with XML, we will receive a list in XML with the same result. Let's do our custom media type formatter. To do that, we need to extend a class from media type formatter or from buffered media type format. The difference is the media type formatter do a sync read and write and the buffered media type formatter do synchronous read and write. Okay, so let's do the code. Here in Hello World project, we have a media type formatter controller that I just created. This controller contains a class that is the person that contains a first name, a last name and a age. It has also two action methods, agent, smith, factory and get formatters. This one is the one that I showed you in the slides where we get the available media type formatters, configuration.formatters and then we do the magic to list them and this second one the agent smith factory just returns a list of person is just that this is the one that we will use in this example okay let's do the code here to create our media type formatter and we will create a media type formatter for csv public class person csv formatter that extends buffered media type formatter we have to import something here the system.net.http.formatting we import that and because this is an abstract class and it has abstract methods we have to implement the abstract class so we click here and we get two methods here can read type and can write type we just want to write a type not read a csv we just want to write a csv so the first one is simple to implement we just have to return false the second one is very easy too we just have to go here and return type of i enumerable of person and we say that is assignable from 
type that we just received as parameter, with this line of code we are just saying that this type must be a list, an array or something that is a i enumerable of person, okay? Just accepts enumerables of person. Example, lists, arrays and so on. The next part is, of course, we need a constructor. So we go here at the beginning and we say ctor tab tab and we need to add a csv application slash csv. So we say supported media types dot add and we will add this media type. Let's say new media type adder value and we need to import something here system dot net.http.adders we import these and we provide the string application slash csv just that and of course we close ok now we need to write the csv somewhere so we go here to the end I don't know this by memory so let's make the IntelliSense help us so we say public override we will override something that is void and IntelliSense is just saying to us that it has three methods set default content adders write to stream and a second method for write to stream the first one is not for us the set default content adders is not for us the write to stream is the right one and we have two choices the first one and the second one the second one receives a cancellation token so this is clearly not our choice okay because we are we are using the buffered media type formatter that is synchronous okay is not asynchronous and cancellation tokens are used for asynchronous methods so we use the write to stream without cancellation token okay and this receives four parameters the first one is the type the second one is the value uh, object the third is a stream to write and the last one is the HTTP content let's deal with this line we don't need these and first we need to write this on a stream so it will be this stream the stream that we received so we say here using var sw for new stream writer and we provide the write stream that we want to write next we received a uh, object value we need to convert this so we say var people is equals to value as i enumerable of person and if people is different from null if everything is okay we can do a for each var p in people and we can say sw dot write line and we provide the string dollar p dot first name p dot last name and finally p dot h just like this we are good to go let's run these and go to postman and test we have this request api slash mtf slash smiths this is the action method that creates h and smiths okay we have a content type of application xml and we accept application csv also in the body we are sending xml okay john and peter and we get a response it's not our csv it's strange right so we have two lessons to learn here the first one is there is a step that we need to do first because clearly web api doesn't know what is csv application slash csv and the second one is we received xml we did not receive the default one the json one so the second question I will answer next first let's finish this one we go again here to the hello world and go to the solution we go under configuration my configuration and we have to add this line of code to the configuration config dot formatters dot add and we say that we want to add our person csv formatter to the collection of formatters okay so now we can test it again and go here and send a request and now we get our csv format 
okay just remember our class have to extend buffered media type formatter after that we have to implement can read type and can write type from the abstract class buffered media type formatter then we decided to implement write to stream because we want to write a csv okay and this is the first one not the one that have a cancellation token and of course we have to implement our constructor where we say that this type can handle application slash csv to convert the clr objects into csv these two are important the can read type can be can just return false because we don't want to read a csv file we want to write into a csv okay and of course don't forget we have to register our new formatter okay so we go to the my configuration and register and we go to config.formatters.add our person csv formatter we notice also that before adding our new media type formatter, Web API just got us XML instead of JSON, and JSON is the default. So what happened here? I said before that the content type is not considered for response format, okay? But there is a situation where it is important, okay? And I think it's more easy to understand if I explain in a real life situation. So let's imagine here that we have a tourist and we have a local person that knows English and French. And the tourist will ask the local person for directions using signs and pointing to the map. He prefers an answer in German, okay? The local guy doesn't know German, but he knows a widely used language that is English, so he will talk back in English. The next time, the tourist will ask it again, but in French. He wants the answer in German. The local guy doesn't know German, but he knows French. And since the tourist asks in French, he will reply in French, not in German. Okay, so Web API does exactly the same thing. We have a client app here, we have a web API here, and the web API here have a collection of media type formatters of JSON and XML. JSON can be the English and XML can be the French. The client app sends a request, a HTTP get, so it doesn't have a content type, it doesn't have a body, and it says that accepts CSV. Web API doesn't have CSV, so it will respond in JSON, the default one, the widely used language. Next time, the client app will do another request, a post, and have in the body a XML message. Also, it asks for CSV. And Web API still don't know what is CSV, but it knows what is XML and the client app just gave to the web API a message written in XML. So web API will reply in XML. Is just that you don't have to memorize nothing, you just have to understand. Okay? This is very, very simple. This is the end and as always, thank you for watching.